Good morning, folks. Pastor Jim from the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee, here with your daily devotion. Looking again at the Beatitudes, picking up right where we left off last week, and uh, from Matthew chapter 5, that first opening part of the most famous sermon in the world, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we had read uh, and studied five of these already, and I'm going to, so that we kind of reorient ourselves for the week here anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read from the first one, and then we'll camp out a little bit uh, on number six here today. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You'll remember these have three parts to them, De declaration of blessedness, condition of the heart, so blessed are the pure in heart, and then some attending benefit or reward. So beginning there with that one, very obvious, the pattern there. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle or the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yeah, for they shall be satisfied. That's good. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And we talked last time together about how everybody you meet is probably fighting some kind of great battle and needs some kind of mercy or grace extended to them, just as you do and just as I do. So important for us, I think, to remember how much mercy has been shown to us and how could we possibly refuse to show the same mercy to others, even when they slight us even when they in some way um, don't respect us or don't give us their, what we think is proper and due. Well, this number six is so awesome. It's pro it may be my favorite, uh, but it's because of what it doesn't say. <laughs> Here's what it does say. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And uh, I love what it says, of course. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Especially the, the attending benefit part of that, to, to see God, to, to be able to catch a glimpse of his glory. Uh, it's just wonder of wonders, you know. Uh, what am I happy about that it doesn't say? I'm blessed that, uh, I, I'm happy that it doesn't say, blessed are the pure in life because that's not me and as uh, far as i can see i'm a far uh, I'm, I'm a far cry from it probably you feel the same way too well some of it depends of course on how we uh, interpret some of these terms and um uh, blessed is or we already talked about that makarios in the greek it's it's uh it's it's more than deeper than happiness because happiness depends on happenings blessedness is this uh whole souled flourishing uh, that God uh, offers to us. It's the same thing as the abundant life that Christ offers to us. He's come that they might have life and have it more abundantly, he said. Um, I want to turn back a couple decades. Um, I'm often using books by John Stott or uh, N.T. Wright, Sinclair Ferguson, and J.C. Ryle to help us understand these Beatitudes if you go back and watch the others. And I'm going to go to Billy Graham this time, but this book goes all the way back to 1955. It's called The Secret of Happiness and just shows you how the English language does evolve. As I said, I, I think this is about more than happiness, blessedness is. But um, just to catch a little bit of a, see, see a little bit of a, uh, a, the gap in terms of definition of terms. Um, in 1955, Billy Graham talking about what does this word pure mean and, and the word heart, you know, what, what, is that, is that, what does that all mean? And so uh, he writes this, the word translated pure here was used in several ways in the original Greek language. For one thing, it was often used to mean something that was unadulterated or unmixed with anything foreign, such as pure gold, which has not been mixed with any other metal or milk, which has not been watered down. Or again, it often simply meant clean, like a dish, which had been thoroughly washed or clothes that had been scrubbed. So you can see why some commentators might think that a pure heart would mean uh, freedom from the tyranny of, an, uh, of a divided self. So pure in the sense that uh, unalloyed, you know, uh, um, uh, it has that 
quality of purity, that it's single-minded in a way. Others might lean more heavily in the direction of uh, the heart motives and uh, disposition of the mind and that sort of thing. So more on the moral side of things, which is it? Um, the answer is yes, <laughs> it's both. So, uh, because to have one is to have the other, to have a uh, uh, unalloyed heart toward God uh, will affect the way I behave morally and the way that I think about other persons. And so I love uh, the complexity and yet the simplicity of this. Uh, he says, now apply these meanings, Billy Graham does, to pure in heart. If you are truly pure in our hearts, we will have a single-minded devotion to the will of God. Our motives will be unmixed. Our thoughts will not be adulterated with those things which are not right. And our hearts will be clean because we will not tolerate known sin in our hearts and allow it to pollute us. We will take seriously the Bible's promise. If we have, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. No better way to start the day than to have our hearts washed clean, washed pure, uh, as we trust in and hope in our Savior, our Redeemer. And to, to uh, even pray to the extent that God would, as he washes us clean by his grace and his mercy, uh, that we would then be able to go and, and express uh, that same kind of grace and mercy to others and make sure our right, our relationships are right before uh, the Lord, who has uh, uh, done everything necessary for us to have a right relationship with Him. Blessed are the pure in heart. Ah, that's wonderful. For they shall see God. Great way to start the day. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you for this beautiful passage. Thank you for all that uh, it holds for us: the the freedom, the richness, the delight, the joy that is ours uh, as we turn our hearts to you. Have them washed pure and clean by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, and then go, Lord, send us out into the world, yes, to be agents of your grace and mercy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.